Hi everybody, sorry about that, we had a bad connection. We're going to start again. You know, sometimes that's the bad part about doing the live shows is we can lose our connection. But, anyway, we're troopers, so we'll all hang in there together. And we were just talking about what you guys got in your kits this month. Of course, you got your new surface. You're going to want to set that aside for your next class that we're going to be painting on ceramic tile. You got your foxy, bronze, uh, peacock. Those are just so pretty together. And um, you got your liquid wax gloss, which we're actually going to be using tonight. But this is going to be a demonstration class. So you all sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself as we show you how to paint on countertops. Um, really, when you're painting countertops, it's honestly all about the technique. So we can have all the products, but we kind of we need to know how to use them. So in order to uh, create that granite look um, and all those different looks, you just kind of need to know how to do it. So we're going to work on that. Um, this is one of our countertop kits. When you order a countertop kit from Plaster Paint, we don't want you to have to second guess, like, what do you need? You know, what kind of sealer do I need? What kind of brushes do I need? So inside your kit, you have everything you need to go home and do your countertops. This is a, a rag that you could use to put on your um, liquid wax gloss at the end, so it gives you a nice smooth surface. So we'll show you that. You're going to get your accent colors in your kit. And each kit can vary depending upon what you're, the look that you're looking for. But the one thing about it is everything will be in here. Everything all the way down to your blending sponge, your sanding sponge, your brushes, your sealer, and your accent colors that you choose. So, just wanted you to see that. Everything's in there. So whenever you go home, you don't have to worry about having anything else. So we're going to get started. I also want to show you some of the looks that you can get with your plaster paint countertop kits. This one is our Grecian marble. And that's peacock bronze and a couple of other colors there. This one's kind of neat for like an industrial look. It's um, it's just really cool. So it just depends on the look you want. This is the uh, weathered wood look. This would be good in brown tones as well as the gray tones. This one's really pretty. If you like the gray tones, this one works well. And then we have this. I think this is almost everybody's favorite this time. It's a nice blending of colors. And this is a really pretty one down here too. I can't read it. It's upside down. <laughs> the top one is uh, black pearl countertop and foxy pearl and ivory lace. And the bottom is black pearl countertop with spun gold, bronze, pearl, and smoke. So uh -huh. to me, I felt yeah. like this showed you a huge what you could do with just a base coat and make it completely different. Yes. So, yeah, I'm glad you're talking about that because this is the same base coat. Both of these countertops use the uh, black pearl base coat. So... And this one is? This is smoke countertop with foxy pearl and ivory lace. And the upper one is smoke countertop as well with fireside and pearl. So again, looking at your board, Same you base can... Coat. Mm hmm Completely different look. All right. So we're going to jump right in here. We're, we're actually almost like in a garage today. <laughs> it's an office slash garage. So we've got the door open and the sun's going down and it's it's really pretty but it's a little bit warm so I might be sweating just a little bit. Okay, so I've already painted this board in black pearl. Black pearl is one of our new metallic colors. I just love it. You guys are going to find lots of things to paint with black pearl. So I've already painted, let it dry. If you're doing your countertop, the first thing you want to do is clean it really well. I mean, you want to make sure there's no grease on that countertop anywhere. And run your hand across it and make sure it's feeling nice and smooth. Sometimes our countertops can just have some buildup of different things. Especially in the bathroom, you can have a lot of hairspray and things like that. It might look clean, run your hand across it, and you're like, oh. So that's what your little sandy block is for that's in your kit. So just lightly sand it before you get started. Uh, you're not really sanding the finish off as much as you are just uh, looking for any um, uneven areas. 
Then you're going to go ahead and paint on your base coat, just a solid color base coat. Let that dry, and a nice little sanding on that as well is always good. You want to look at your countertops and make sure you don't have any little brush hairs that have gotten down in here. If you do, get them out right then before you start your layering process. You won't be using a brush while you're doing your layering, so that'll be good. You don't have to worry about any more um, brush, um, brush hairs getting in there until you get ready to do your sealer, and that's a real important step. So we're going to go ahead and start by... Also, like, even though you can see those lines uh -huh. on the, the countertop when you put on your accent colors, and when you seal it, it'll take those lines away. Right, right, mm -hmm. it sure will. So, okay, so we're going to use our little plates. We always talk about that. You know, it's so nice at the end of your project. You can just toss it, throw it away. Um, you want to make sure you've got a waxy bottom or a star foam, not paper, because the paper's going to soak up your product and um, it would take more product there. Let's go ahead and start by blending our bronze on here. Whenever you're doing a countertop, you want to make a zigzag design. The reason you want to do that, I'm sure you can imagine if I had just poured the paint on here, I would have a big glob of paint. Then when I go to put my sponge in there, I'm not going to be able to make any kind of a design on here. So do your zigzag design. Put your sponge in, push down, and you're wanting this uneven look, okay? Then you're just going to start by, you don't want to press down on this. You don't want this design to end up on your countertop. What you want to do is just barely lightly, just barely lightly let the sponge hit the top of your countertop. Kind of turn it as you go so you don't get the same design. I like to kind of turn it in my hand as I go. You probably can't see this very good because it's dark on dark. And we don't want to get a tremendous amount right now. The biggest thing you don't want to see is a pattern. You know, when you're looking at granite, the one thing you don't see in granite is a pattern. So you don't want any kind of a special pattern. You just want to add that color to the top. And if you make some smears here and there, that's fine too. That actually adds a little bit of character to it, okay? So that's about all I would want to do with my first um, accent color. If you're doing your kitchen countertop, do the whole thing. So we would want to do like from one end of the countertop all the way over to the other end of the countertop and back with this one accent color. The reason you want to do that, you don't want any stop lines. I wouldn't want to do half my countertop and then stop, do another accent color and stop, because as I do that, I'm going to have this stop line over here, and you're always going to notice that. It's really hard to blend it. So I know it's not too much fun to do the whole thing at once, but go ahead and just knock that out and go ahead and do the whole thing. Um, if you have a backsplash that has a curve on it, you know, a lot of us will have the countertop that comes along and then it curves up over the back right here. That can be a tricky spot to get to. So all you would do to get to that area, take your sponge, cut off a tiny piece, hold that in your hand, and then blend that by hand across the back of your countertop. So you always do, like we're gonna do bronze right now, so we would do the whole thing in our accent color bronze. All right, now we're gonna move on to another color. The next color we're gonna use is gonna be Foxy. And again, we're going to make our lines zigzag. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn my sponge over. My hands are going to get messy anyway. I'm going to turn my sponge over and just go ahead and press down on there. Again, your lines are uneven. And same thing. We're just going to start blending. I'm going to turn my sponge as I go so I don't get the same design. It's really easy and it's really a lot of fun if you're just not nervous about it. One thing that everybody worries about is not getting the design the right way. And you really won't be able to tell what it's going to look like until you get pretty close to being finished with your accent color. So don't get discouraged. 
if you're doing this and you're like, ah, oh, that's not quite the look I was hoping for, just keep blending. The other thing is if you accidentally make a mistake, let's say that I pressed down really too hard in one spot and I got a whole bunch of this color right here. All I would need to do is take my original base coat color, which you all remember that was black pearl. I would take that and just blend that area back and then just go ahead and fix it. So it's not difficult to fix a spot if you get it too heavy or too light, whatever. If it's too light, just keep blending. Another thing that can be good is when you get your countertop kits, um, all of our countertop kit paints are the same colors that we have in our regular paints, meaning that you could get a small sample of each of these colors just to play with before you do your actual countertop if you wanted to do that to really get a good idea for the blending and stuff. And you usually have enough in your kit to do a small test area. So you could say, gosh, you know, I really want a lot more bronze. I want a lot more foxy in that, so on and so forth. Okay, so you can see it's starting to take shape already. Some people might say, you know, I like that. I'm gonna stop right there. And other people might say, I wanna go ahead and blend a few more colors. So I'm gonna blend now. I'm gonna move on to I'm going to add to this a little bit of spun gold. For those of you that haven't seen our spun gold, it really does look like, what do they call that stuff? Gold, um, I said it yesterday, but today I can't think about it. Like gold leaf, but that's mm -hmm. not even the word. Anyway, it really is a pretty, pretty color of, of gold. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of that to this. Again, our design, and we're just going to start hitting it here and there. Turn my sponge. Now, Mom has two sponges, <clears throat> so your kit comes with one, but you can always rinse it out and squeeze out all the water as much as you can, and then start with your other color. Yes, get all the water back out of it, and even take a paper towel and. Um, get all the white. It can be damp. Damp's fine. You just don't want it to be wet. So that was a good point to bring up. You don't have to have a completely dry sponge. It can be a little bit damp. Okay, so we've added the gold. Hopefully all are starting to like that look. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to pearl. Most all of our countertop kits in fact, all of them, actually, unless somebody orders them otherwise, come with uh, mostly metallics. The reason they're like that is, as you know, in granite and marble, those things have a shimmer to them. So once we, once we get finished with this and we put on our liquid wax, all those shimmer, that shimmery color is going to start coming out. Y'all are going to love this. It's, it's pretty incredible when you put the liquid wax on here. It just brings it all to life. So I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna go ahead and do my pearl. Pearl can sometimes, it's an iridescent. It can sometimes take on like a little bit of a gray tone or a white tone, depending upon the um, color that you're putting it on top of. like the look of this. I think one thing I want to do though is I'd like to go back and add some more spun gold. I can see that kind of peeking through here and there and I'm really liking that color on with this particular one. So let's go back to our spun gold and let's add some more. So again we're going to do the zigzag line. I'm just going to use the plate that I already had. And maybe I can find the one that we used. I believe, no, nope, that was bronze. Oh well, we'll be good. I'm just gonna use this one. Just hang tight with me. <laughs> Here we go. Press down, got our spun gold. Let's just go ahead and add a little more. And you know, this is all about personal preference. So you can ask your um, plaster paint retailer for some advice and suggestions. And they'll usually have some like different little sample uh, boards in there for you to look at. 
you can contact us here if you have any questions. But honestly, the blending part is just what you're kind of looking for. Get your look the way you like it. And let's go ahead and add a little more bronze to that, just for the fun of it. And the biggest thing people ask is, how are you going to care for this after you're finished with it? Let's add a little more bronze, and then we're going to go ahead and seal it. As you can see, this goes very, very quickly. Of course, if you're doing a huge countertop, it's not going to go as fast as this, but it still does go really fast. Because this, you're putting on such a small amount of paint with your accent colors that it's almost dry immediately to the touch when you put it on there. So, add a little more bronze. And as you can see, we've almost covered up our black pearl. So the black pearl is just kind of a little bit of an accent underneath all of these colors. So there we go. And I think we're going to stop right there. What do you think, Annette? Um, yeah, yeah. Is that good? Yep. All right. Anybody got questions at home? Nope. No, everybody's always so quiet. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is going to dry really quickly, like I said, and we're going to go ahead and put our liquid wax on here. Once we put our liquid wax on, it's just going to really come to life, and that's what we love about it. Um, so one thing that everyone asks is how to clean this. You don't want to clean it with an abrasive cleaner. Once you get your sealer on there, it's going to last you a good amount of time, but it's still a painted surface, like any painted surface. If I dropped a knife on here and gouged it, or a really like an iron skillet, and I got you know, and I put a pan directly on it, you don't want to do that. But you wouldn't put a, a hot iron skillet directly on your Formica countertop either; it would burn it as well. Um, so you just care for it like you would uh, your Formica, and you'll be pretty good. So if I got something on here, I wouldn't want to take my metal scrubber to scrub this off it would act as like a sanding block and pull my sealer off. So if you use care, my bathroom um, has been done now going on three years and it's really holding up well. It's just getting to the point where it's got a few little nicks and scrapes here and there and the sealer's really dulled down. I could tell kind of where I always spray my hairspray. There's a spot right there that the sealer's really worn down. So, but it's just as simple as going back in touching it up again and putting another two coats of sealer on there and it'll probably last me for another two or three years or at least until I'm ready to, to remodel the bathroom. So this is our granite look. <coughs> I hope you guys like it. I'm really liking it. Let's go ahead and seal it. Now would you go ahead and use your 220 fine sanding block yes. to knock off any bumps oh, or raised okay. areas? <laughs> <laughs> as you as you put on these layers, these colors and layers, you're sometimes can create some little bumps of paint like where you're pulling it back up. So rub your hand across it and I can feel there's a rough spot right there and right there. So that was a good point in that made. Now we're not sanding it. Nope. We're letting the sanding block we're lightly, I'm not putting any pressure on it whatsoever. And I'm just letting the sanding block pull back off any of those little bad spots that I might have because let's say I'm doing this and I realize there really is a bad spot here, I've got time to touch it up, okay, before I put my sealer on. So that's always a good thing. Of course, use your hands, rub it across there, make sure it's feeling like it should. Um, so now I'm ready to add my sealer. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. I think the more we do this, the more we're realizing that a rag is really a great way because you don't get the brush marks like you would with these with a brush. The other thing that you can do if you have a, one of our synthetic brushes, those work really well as well. So now we're going to take our sealer. You always want to use what's in your kit, which is going to be uh, plaster paint liquid wax gloss. The gloss is what's going to bring that all those colors out and make them really vibrant. The other thing is, is the super gloss liquid wax is the hardest sealer that for this type of a project. It's super, super hard. So I'm just going to get my rag in there like that. 
and I'm going to come across here and you can see already that it's deepening down those colors. Isn't that gorgeous? Get some more sealer. The other thing it. too, notice we didn't bring any scissors with us, but that rag is pretty big, so you can actually cut that into a couple of different pieces to use. Yes. Yeah, you just want something more comfortable in your hand. Okay, you can see how that is just changing this piece. I'm going to let this dry, and we don't have all those brush strokes. Right there. Let's stop right. This is going to dry really fast. All of, most all of our products dry in 15, 20, 25 minutes. Depending upon the humidity in your area, it could take longer. But um, it's really going to dry super quickly. I do like to let my top coat sit and dry overnight. Why? Because right now the paints, even though they're dry, are kind of soft still. Your uh, liquid wax is still going to be soft for a few hours. So if I let, if I let this uh, sit overnight and harden, then tomorrow I can come back and I can put another coat of the gloss on here. And the two coats are going to be good. Some people like to put three coats of sealer on it. So that's something that you could do as well if you have, you're going to have a lot of high traffic. Go ahead and put three coats on it. It's just that simple. Then the big thing is going to be always let it cure out. Paint has to harden. It's dry, but it's not hard. So I, you need to let them harden for a minimum of three days before you really use them at all. Seven days, you can start using them. I mean, you can use it, but just be really careful. You wouldn't want to scrub it or clean it or drop anything on it. It's going to be at its very hardest in, at the end of 30 days. So if you can make it the 30 days and really take good care of it and stuff, it'll last you a good, good long time. So any questions? No. Nope. Everybody's too quiet. They're just quiet. I, you know, we're chatty Catherine and Nat. <laughs> I mean, okay, so we're talking about our next class is going to be painting on ceramic tile. That's going to be a lot of fun. You all are going to go look for your own piece of, of ceramic tile. You can get the slickest one. You can get whatever you want. And your assignment, your homework, is to paint that about three days before our class using your new surface. Where was that? Grab your new surface and put you a nice coat of new surface on that ceramic tile at least three days before we do our class. I mean, you don't have to do it three days, but it, it's better if you can. One day before will work as well. As long as it's good and dry and it's started to harden out just a little bit. Then we're going to paint that ceramic tile and we're going to talk about the tips and tricks on doing that. Um, so you can paint your backsplashes and all of that to go with your pretty new Formica look. So as you can see, this really does look like granite. And how easy was that? You know, the biggest thing you don't want to do, I just want to show you one other little trick here. I'm going to flip this over. It's a little tacky, but it'll be all right. I want to show you what you don't want to do. We do this in class so that everybody can see it. You know how you make that bear paw design. The worst thing you can do is come over and push down on your countertop. You're going to end up with a mess like that. And if you do that, take a wet rag and wipe that off and just start over. Okay? So remember, the technique is just a light, I call it pouncing, for lack of a better word, but just pounce. You can, you can add more and more color as you go along, but you can't take that off. If you're halfway done and you get this on there, like I said, just take a damp cloth and wipe that off and get it off. But that's the biggest mistake that people make where they get a spotty look by putting too much pressure like that. And you don't want that spotty look. You want a more blended look. So as you can see, it was really super simple how we did that. And we have a nice look. And also rotating the sponge, yes. not continuing to go in the same pattern. Right, right. Turn that sponge. Push it down and turn it go this way and then turn it again and go that way so it makes it really easy. Alright, well if nobody's got any questions on this, we do have a video showing you how to do this. Uh, if you go onto our Facebook page, go to the video section, you can uh, look up uh, kitchen 
cabinet and countertop makeover. It's also on YouTube. We are going to be releasing a couple of new videos. Um, this may be one of them. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but we're going to release a couple of new videos to show you how to blend some of our new colors that we have. But again, it's super easy. There's no painted surface that's a forever surface because over time it's going to get damaged. But it's just as easy as touching it up and putting a new coat of sealer. So thanks for joining us, you all. I look forward to visiting with you uh, at our ceramic tile class. And please let us know if you have any questions. Have a good night.